But in objections, you know, we talked about opening the door and stuff. You know, if you don't object, the other side's going to get up there and they're going to open the door. We tried a case uh, in federal court. It was a product liability case um, that we lost last week. I hate to brag, but we lost the case. We, me and John Simon tried it together. We had a bet at the end. It was the Friday of the first week of trial and not, none of us had objected on the plaintiff's side, not once. In, in five days. And the, and the defense lawyer is standing there, the witness is there, the, uh, the witness is there, the judge is there, the, the, tr the lawyers are watching the jury, just giving speeches to the jury the whole time. But what happened was, I don't, know, I don't know if it worked or not, whatever, but what happened was we are able to open the door on a lot of evidence, get a lot of stuff in we would not have gotten otherwise. There are some good trial lawyers that I read about their stuff, they say don't object ever. Um, so. I'm not saying that, look, if you have something, if, you're, if your client had a drug problem 10 years ago and the defense wants to bring it in, you've got to object and you've got you to make that record on the, because the motions to eliminate aren't, aren't worth the paper they're printed on. You've got to keep that objection. You've got to be cognizant of that. You've got to be vigilant about that. But think about that in terms of objecting rather than getting up, oh, was he leading the question? Let him lead. Who cares? Or was he doing this? You know, whatever. Th you know, so something to think about. Correct. And, and, and so not boring the jury. Make your, be prepared. That's uh, the Girl Scout motto. Is it the Boy Scout motto? I think it's Boy Scout. Bob's an Eagle Scout. Bob? Yes, it was. Oh. Thank you, Bob. Uh -huh. <laughs> any rate, um, they know when you're shuffling papers. They know when you don't have exhibits. They, you're delaying the trial. And they just want to be, hear the evidence. I say they're conscientious. They are. But they want to get home. And they want it to be over in a couple days. And so if you're unprepared, it shows the jury knows it. Be direct and concise in your, in your direct examination. Get to the point. They'll know if you're fishing around and you don't know what you're doing. So prepare your cross-examination also. Know what you want to get from a particular witness in cross-examination. And then go for it. Don't spend hours, you know, going through all this background that we've already heard before from other witnesses. Get to the point, this witness, and be done with it. Um, Can I echo yeah. something for you on, from you on cross? Uh -huh. So a lot of people don't prepare their witnesses for cross as well as they should. Uh, you prepare them from direct, right? So preparing for cross can be very important. So um, I tell you, you have to say yeses and nos. You are not there and you have to be, you, you have to be sweet as pie, kind and nice, and yeses and nos. 80% of what is communicated is visual, 20% is verbal. If you have the lawyer up there yelling at the at the at the 300 pound truck driver and he's just going yes no yes no, he won the case. He won that interchange cuz they see the lawyer yelling in the person. If on the other hand, the the the, the lawyer is asking frankly okay questions and the person thinks that they need to argue and equivocate on and versus or or say their whole case in response to every question, it kills you. Uh, I tell the clients, look, I'm going to um, I get to redirect you after you just say yeses and noes if, if they say did you tell the, the the doctor at this day your pain was two out of ten say yes because then I get to get up and say that you had surgery two days later you just had a good day because you're hyped up on Percocet that day right so you don't need to sit and argue your case and respond and the, the inclination you guys have all had this is that you're like dying up there your clients up there arguing everything you're like I told you yeses and noes <laughs> I had a client one time uh, try to porch collapse case and they cross-examined her, Evelyn Goodlow, God bless her soul. They had her passing a bad check years before. And so, and so she's there, did you pass this check? No, it wasn't this and it was this dead. She's arguing on and on and on. And she looked over at me and I held my paper up so the jury couldn't see when I go like this, I go. And she reminded her to say, be sweet as pie and say yes and no's. And she turned around and she said, yep, I passed the bad check. Yep, I did. The cross-examination was done. They didn't get a thing out of her. So. Really, yeses and noes, be sweet as pie. And they'll remember that. And when they forget, you know, that's okay. But at least they know. So that's something on cross. Right. So, the, yeah, so this, the, the juror is your judge, and the uh, witnesses are your case. Um, but when witnesses aren't all your case, and you're going to do videotape depositions and depositions and exhibits, have them marked have them marked, have them ready, know how to use the video machine. I still talked about overheads, but we now have videos and computers. 
and so that you're, again, not delaying the trials and not looking incompetent. Um, don't make speaking objections from the floor. That's objectionable. You'll be embarrassed when the judge tells, calls you up to the bench. Uh, don't use a lot of sidebars. Jurors hate sidebars. Try to make your record at the break um, if, you, if, you, if possible, okay? Um, again, you want, you want the jury to hear your case and to see that you're knowledgeable and efficient. Um, your opening in trial, I was taught 40 years ago that you were supposed to tell a story, that it should be like the contents of a book, that you should be not describing every minutia of your evidence, but tell the jury a story so they understand what the case is about. And you can humanize it. And you call your client, you know, uh, Jim or John or whatever. And you make that person a, a sympathetic human being, especially if you're a criminal defense lawyer. Criminal defense lawyer, you go up and touch them and you say, <laughs> okay. But at any rate, um, keep your opening very simple and don't start ev every sentence with the evidence will show. Think of it as a story, okay? Never say the evidence will show and never tell them in closing argument that this is just argument, not evidence. <coughs> just talk. 